Uh, so hi, I'm Ari Rudolph, the Vice President of Philanthropic Engagement at JFN, and I'm so happy to have you join us today for the workshop, Relationships Matter. It's my pleasure to introduce Eliza Mazor, Chief Field Building Officer at Upstart, who will lead today's session. Eliza, turn it over to you. Wonderful, and I will be leading this session in collaboration with my colleague, Taylor Epstein, and with some members of the JFN team, and we'll introduce everybody as we go along. Um, I very first wanna welcome you all to this session and to Granted, which is a brand new initiative that we're gonna tell you a lot more about. If you would like to introduce yourselves to each other, you have an opportunity to do so in the chat. You can drop in your name and any other information you wanna share about yourself, where you're coming from today, what your role is, et cetera. And um, there will be time in this session for breakouts and engagement in smaller groups. And uh, if we end up having a small group, we'll come off mic and talk to each other. So lots of opportunities to get to know each other as we go. Um, so I'm inviting you all uh, to this first, very first session of Granted, which is a joint initiative of the Jewish Funders Network and Upstart. Um, you see here, you all know JFN because you're here at the conference and Upstart works with leaders to dream, build and grow bold initiatives that enhance the vitality of Jewish life. And this collaboration brings together the perspective of grant makers and grant seekers, which is who this project is aimed at. Um, the goals of today's session are first of all, to dive into today's theme of humility and the capacity to hold multiple truths and understand how that relates to this whole topic of relationship building between grant makers and grant seekers. We want you to leave this session feeling motivated to put time and energy into improving relationships with grant seekers that you work with. And we really want you to think about specific tactics that you might take away both from this session and we hope you'll spend time on the Granted Resource Hub and um, take ideas away from that as well. Um, yep. Um, I am Elisa Mazur, I'm the Chief Field Building Officer at Upstart and Taylor, you wanna come on mic for one second, introduce yourself. Hi everyone, Taylor Epstein, Managing Director of Learning and Design at Upstart. So thrilled to be here today. So I just wanna spend one minute looking at Zoom for anyone that may not be familiar with this modality so that we can have you all be active participants in this session. Uh, your mute and unmute button is the microphone on the bottom left. You can use that if you wanna join the conversation. What I will ask is in the, in the parts where we're presenting, please stay on mute. Um, but if we open up conversation, please come off mute. And certainly when you're in breakouts, come off mute. Um, you can use the camera icon if you need to be off camera. We would love everyone to be on camera, but again, if you want that option. Um, and uh, the rest of this is mostly for us aside from the chat function, which I encourage you to use to uh, build on the conversation that's happening in the session. Great, so our ground rules are, cause we're all Zooming mostly from home, uh, aside from our Israeli colleagues who do seem to be in the office, uh, that real life is welcome. We know that's gonna happen. Just try to mute yourself if real life around you is loud. Um, be on the chat so that we can all participate. Please share the air. It's an hour long session, which means that if you spend a lot of time speaking, then others won't have an opportunity to participate. So we really wanna share that with everyone who's in the session. Please ask questions. You can use the question function. You can use the chat function. And Sarah Beth, who is on the Upstart team here, will help to harvest those. Um, and is there anything else anyone wants to propose as a guideline? If you do want to propose an additional guideline, please drop it in the chat and Sarah Beth will let us know about it. Great. Going next. Ah. And. So I wanna just spend a minute talking about the, the backdrop to Granted and why we engaged in this joint initiative between JFN and Upstart and what we hope will come out of it. Um, you will have an opportunity and I will flag it for you at the end of this session to hear Jack Wertheimer who wrote a beautiful report about relationships between grant makers and grant seekers in the Jewish community. He wrote this report over a year ago, but due to COVID, there wasn't the right opportunity to really showcase this report. So we're coming back to it now. And this report really says a lot about why relationships matter, how we get a lot of it right in the Jewish community, 
but some of it misses the mark and there's ways that we could all be doing better. So we really wanted to create a framework, an ongoing framework for engagement that will allow grant makers and grant seekers to better understand one another, to collaborate and support each other's work, to set really clear expectations and um, have a game plan for when expectations aren't met and really work together on building the Jewish future that we all want. So today we're gonna to spend a little time opening our session, finding some inspiration in today's theme of humility. We're gonna spend some time learning from each other's experience. And then we're gonna actually through this session contribute to the wider conversation. Today as part of the session, we're gonna work on jam boards. We're gonna generate some of our thoughts and ideas and those will then be edited and placed on the graduate website. So you'll be able to see your own handiwork featured on the resource hub at the end, uh, not immediately after the session, but within a few days. Um, and at this point, I wanna hand it over to my dear colleague, Dina Fuchs, who's gonna share a little bit of her own story around humility and the report that Jack created and why relationships with grant seekers and between grant seekers and grant makers matters so much to her. Dina? Great, thank you, Eliza. Um, I just wanna thank Taylor and Sarah Beth um, and, um, and Ari, um, you will all be helping to sort of facilitate the session. Um, I, want to, um, I want to share a story with you um, in the spirit of humility. And it's, it's, it's not actually a, an easy story to tell, um, it's one I've shared only once before. Um, and then I mentioned it in passing in a meeting with Eliza and she's like, you know, you got to tell the story. So um, I'm going to, and, and it, it really, it shares with, um, it, it, it's, it's my why, that why this work is so important. So um, if you can bear with me, um, I'm gonna give you a little bit of background and, um, and you'll, see, you'll see what I mean. So um, first of all, for those of you who don't know me, I'm the executive vice president of Jewish Funders Network. Um, and um, before joining JFN around two years ago, uh, I was at the Avichai Foundation for almost 20 years. And that foundation sunset at the close of 2019. So at Avichai, I was a senior professional. Um, and over my tenure there, I had worked with dozens and dozens of grantees. I had designed more programs that I can remember, um, many of which were actually scaled and modeled by other funders. I, I was involved in the Foundation Sunset and I developed strategies for our grantees and for the fields in which we operated in. And, and I'd like to think that I was a trusted colleague and a partner to our grantees and many of which I considered and still consider good friends. Um, and one of the roles that I played, one of the elements in my portfolio was uh, the Foundation's research agenda and um, interest in thought leadership. And especially as a spend down foundation, we wanted to be sure that we left a legacy of knowledge and content that could benefit the field. And so my last project that I worked on was this report that Elisa mentioned with Professor Jack Wertheimer. I'd worked with him many, many times. Um, and a few years prior, he had written a report for Avichai um, on, it was called Big Jewish Givers. And it was um, an overview of the ways in which large funders and foundations were helping to shape the Jewish community. Um, and at that time, when that report came out, um, I remember vividly sitting in a meeting and Andres Spokoine was there and he said, wouldn't it be great if there was a follow-up to this report where we asked nonprofit leaders how they felt about their, their funders. And so we decided at Avichai that this would be our sequel to the report and we commissioned Jack to work on it. And, and he did. And um, th then here I am sitting at my desk at Avichai, it's clearly pre-COVID days. And I was doing what I typically do when a new report would come in. I sat with my track changes open and sometimes I had a red pen and I was thinking about the questions I wanted to ask and the, you know, the feedback I wanted to give and how could I make this report as helpful and as thought leadership as possible for the field, right? Because this was for the field. It was a gift to the field. The foundation was closing. We wanted to leave this as our parting, parting gift. And then um, I turned the page and I read in black and white a story of a nonprofit leader um, critiquing a project that I had actually designed. And I looked at this report and it was for other people, right? Like I was this you know, really seasoned foundation professional who had done tons of good work um, and I was trying to help others. And 
all of a sudden I, I saw myself in the pages of this report. Um, and he didn't say my name, there was no name, there was no foundation attached to it, but it was clearly a program that I had worked on. Um, and in fact, it was actually a program that had been replicated many, many times in many different contexts. And I'll be honest, it was a program that I'm enormously proud of, still enormously proud of, um, because I viewed it and still view it as a game changer. Um, but it was critiqued by this nonprofit leader. And I'm, I remember like looking at it again and again, and I felt my stomach drop. And to be honest, I think I felt a little sick. Um, and then I, um, I'm embarrassed to say my first reaction was I got angry. Um, and I'm like, wow, he really doesn't get it. Like he really didn't understand what I was trying to do here. This was the most successful program. We had raised million, tens of millions of dollars for the field. How is this possible? You know, what's wrong with him? And, um, and then I took a step back and I, and I thought, shame on me, right? Like really shame on me. If he didn't get it, that's on me, right? And if I didn't clearly articulate the goals of the program, that's on me, right? If I didn't really consider whether our foundation's goals and the goals of the organization's goals were aligned, that's on us. Um, and, and, and I didn't design a program that would position him for success. And I think the thing that made me most upset was that I, um, I obviously created a dynamic that didn't allow for that feedback, right? I had to read about it in a report years later. And so all of a sudden this report was no longer a gift to the field. This report was about me, right? And it was about everyone. <laughs> I mean, anyone who's involved in this work coming at it with the best of intentions, with the, the most um, idealistic perspectives, the successes that we're trying to accomplish, but recognizing it's not, it's not perfect. And there's a lot of work. So I edited the report, we finished it, we produced it. It's uh, on the website, here's a copy. Um, but I realized that it's not, it's not a gift to the field if it doesn't come along with tools. And doesn't, it can you know, showcase what the challenges are. First of all, I should say, it showcase what's great about the dynamics between grant makers and grant seekers. And there is so much that's great. Um, but it also sheds some light on what's not so great and where there's room to improve. And so we felt, this had to come along with the toolkit. And so the foundation sunset and I moved to JFN and I took the report with me along with some very generous funding from Adi Chai um, who had already sunset but knew that this was important to take forward. And that was the gift to the field, right? It wasn't just the report, it was the report and it was granted. Um, and the intention is really to, um, to do something about what needs to be improved upon. So, um, I found the most amazing partners in Upstart and it was enormously important that we did this together, right? Because the one thing I learned is I had to get out of my own head, right? Like it's not about what I think, it's about different perspectives and different voices. And it's about the voices of the nonprofit leadership and that Upstart re represents um, so many of them and brings that into the conversation. So I just really with, with um, a deep appreciation to the Upstart team. Um, and then, um, I found myself at JFN, a nonprofit, right? I was now moved away from the funder side and I was on the nonprofit side. And I realized a couple of other things. Number one, I was not nearly as smart or funny as I was as a funder. Um, but more, maybe more importantly, um, I realized that this is not just a grant making challenge. It's a grant seeker challenge too. And grant seekers have an enormous responsibility about rethinking what the relationship looks like. You know, as I'm writing grant reports and there's a question, what didn't work well this year? Like, do I really want to tell what didn't work well? You know, do I really want to like, you know, showcase what's, you know, what's difficult, what the challenges are? I don't know how transparent I should be. I don't know how honest I should be. What if I'm going to lose my funding, right? Like all of those questions were not things I thought about before, but those are real questions that grant seekers have to grapple with. And I know as a funder, having been in that seat before, I want to know the truth. Right, but it's it's not always there. So um, there's a lot of work that has to happen on both sides. So as Eliza mentioned, our intention was to release this report last year at the conference, um, and we decided um, clearly it was not it was not the moment to have this conversation. There were many other conversations that needed to be had, but we also started to see how the funding community stepped up in ways that we couldn't have imagined when we were writing this report. Um, and actually many of the ways in which the community st stepped up were it actually recommendations in the report. And so I think the other element to the conversation that we need to be having is 
what's happened over this past year that can and should continue. Um, and the other, the other piece about not releasing the report back a year ago was that it gave us the opportunity to actually build Rantic, right? The original plan was to release the report and then tell you we're going to do this. Well, now we did it. Um, and so now we can release Granted and the report at the same time. Um, and um, I'll just say, because I think I'm running out of my time, so I've been taking too much time, but um, I'm actually leaving JFN this week, um, moving on to moving back from the uh, nonprofit leadership side to the grant making side. Um, and I'm looking at this project as an enormous gift to me. Um, I've actually bookmarked it. Um, I, it's going to be my go-to resource, sort of my Torah, as to how I'm going to approach my grant making. Because for me, the strong relationships, um, the lessons that I've learned personally and through the report and through the curated and newly created content that is granted, content that is granted, I think will only mean, uh, I hope, make me a much better um, funder partner. Um, and so that's my why. And I just wanted um, to share that all with you. And hopefully that can, you can take some of that. I find your own whys into why this work is so important. Thanks. Thank you, Dina, so much for sharing. So with such vulnerability and such um, reflection that I don't think that we often in the community get a chance to take a step back and think back to what are the ways that we can change and what where can, we could learn from this. So um, Dina, thanks for for lifting that up in such a beautiful way. And to build off of that, um, let's take a, we're gonna take a moment to explore some wisdom from Jewish text that speaks to the same subject. So I'm gonna share my screen again, and I'm gonna see if there is someone who would be willing to, once it loads, um, to read this slide aloud, which I know may be a big ask, but if there's someone who'd be willing to. Finding Inspiration in Humility. Rabbi Simcha Bunim, a great Polish Hasidic master at the turn of the 19th century, is credited with saying the following. Everyone must have two pockets with a note in each pocket so that he or she can reach into one or the other, depending on the need. When feeling low and depressed, discouraged or disconsolate, one should reach into the right pocket and there find the words, Bishvili Nivra Haolam, for me, the world was created. But when feeling high and mighty, one should reach into the left pocket and find the words, Anohi afar ve'ether, I am but dust and ashes. Thank you so much um, for reading that aloud. And I'm putting into the chat right now, my favorite questions to ask when exploring a text. The first one, what does it say? So just in terms of translation, what, what is it actually, what are the words on the page? Or in this case, the screen. The second is, what does it mean? What's your interpretation of it? The third being, what does it mean to you within your context, where you work, who you are as a, as a person? And the fourth we added to it, um, you may have discussed already today in your family groups, but this idea of where does the concept of humility show up in your own work? So I wanna offer to either respond to one of these questions in the chat or by coming off mute, or if you have another thing to bring up that this inspired, feel free to go rogue and not answer a question, but share share what comes up for you. Um, again, either in the chat or if someone wants to come off mute and share what's coming up for them. Taylor, this is from Cincinnati. I love this topic and, and this issue. And, and for me, um, the concept of humility really starts with empathy. So just playing off of what Dina was saying and, and, and what you framed, um, just you know, as a funder, remembering to put ourselves in the shoes of the grant seeker and what that experience is for them and what kinds of questions or challenges or dilemmas they might be posing themselves before communicating with us. And just you know, kind of having that in mind and, and, and empathizing with that is just a, a, a good way in to, to, to try to establish the relationship. Thanks. I think that Dina made a really good point even in the story that relates to that, that moment of initially, even though there might be some resistance at the beginning, is to stop and say, well, how might I empathize in this moment with the person's feedback or what the person's experiencing? So thanks for making that connection. Um, this, I'm in Jerusalem, I've uh, been here almost 30 years, um, but I had worked at the Federation also, of uh, New York Federation. Um, I had, when I first worked, went to the Federation, I had come from one side of the table working in the field with nonprofits and then moved to the Federation and actually was a staff person responsible for reviewing a grant that I had written. Um, and I think that 
was so important in my work. And I think that to hire any professional who hasn't been on the nonprofit side is a disservice to the field that you're grant making to, because unless you've asked people for money, um, it's hard to understand as the grant maker how hard that is and how humiliating it can be and how demoralizing it can be. Um, I ran a business for a while and, and we sat on both sides of the table and I always said the funding part was the harder part, not the fundraising part, because deciding who gets, we all know is very difficult. I think the other thing about humility is, is um, all my donors have always been dead. I worked for the Legacy Fund of the New York Federation. They were all dead. I worked for the Baron de Hirsch Fund. He's been gone for 130 years. Um, my other two families, the donors are gone. I purposely do this because I feel that working with the egos of some of our live donors is just more than I can um, stomach. <laughs> I think it's really, really hard. And I think for you, those of you who work with um, donors who are alive and, and you're there to, if you're a professional, to help make those decisions is very, very difficult work. And I'm a social worker, so, you know, you. I know what Thank it's you. like. In the room. So I think that the humility is so, so important. Thanks. Um, I appreciate you framing that and also with your own wisdom and experience. Um, I see your hand up. I want to make sure we get to you as well. So this is actually not the first time this quote was brought up today. We talked about it in our family group this morning. Wonderful. Um, and actually, we used it um, at the foundation in one of our greetings this year. Also, I think it was our Rosh Hashanah greeting also had this. Um, so it's been coming up a lot. But someone said something in our family group this morning that I had not really ever considered. He said, you know, I, I hope we, we should all have the wisdom to reach into the correct pocket. And I just thought that was so insightful because you think you know when it's time to be humble and when it's time to be confident. And it had never occurred to me that maybe I've been reaching into the wrong pocket at the wrong time. Um, and I just thought that was really beautiful. So I just thought I should share. Thank you. Because I, I, I had not thought of that as well, but I think it relates to the next activity we're doing, which is this idea that when we're looking at, you know, as grant makers and grant seekers, both sides of the coin are looking at a duality of what is most important and what have I spent the time on creating because it is so important and how might I hold humility in that moment as well to recognize times where I'm either missing the mark or not listening in the way I need to listen or just not living up to my own high standard. And the reality of those two things exist at the same time you have both pockets potentially at the same time. You might be reaching into both at the same time. So I wanna to introduce to you um, this idea of a vent diagram. I don't know, this is something that I'm seeing in a number of different places, so you may have seen this before, um, but it's um, a tool that we're using to share that as grant makers, you might also hold these opposing feelings or mindsets simultaneously, especially in relationships with your grant seekers. So. A Venn diagram, if you're familiar with the mathematical term, is this idea of taking two things and seeing the overlap where there are similarities. But a vent diagram with a T instead of two Ns is, could be also called like a kvetch diagram, if you know your Yiddish, or a paint, like what is the, 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 the moment of, of recognition with some pain of like two things are existing at the same time and that might be hard for me to hold, but recognizing that. So um, if you're interested in vent diagrams, you can go, if you're on Instagram, you can go to at vent diagram, um, that's their handle. And you can see a number of them that look like this. Um, photos that show someone writing down two things that are existing simultaneously, even though they might seem like they're in opposite opposition. The one on the right calls to me right now in this time of pandemic crazy, which is, um, there are times at work where it's urgent, it's important, it's necessary, it has to be done correctly. And at the same time, it's just impossible. Like there's this feeling of I can't actually do it right now. Um, and under the current circumstances, it's not gonna happen the way I want. And how can I hold both of those things at the same time? And so what I wanna offer you is a few moments. If you have a pen and paper, pull it out. If you don't have a pen and paper, you can type it 
on um, your computer, or if you want to just sit and think about it, that is a great tool as well. Um, to draw a Venn diagram yourself, which is to say, think of two things that might seem opposing in your relationship with um, grant seekers. Two things that might be at tension with one another, the way that importance and humility is at tension. Um, and the way that Dina shared before, the sense of um, pride at the same time of feeling a sense of recognition that there need, there's potentially um, a weakness within it um, that you feel. So I'll give you a few moments to write down what's coming up for you in creating your own event diagram. And if you feel so compelled, although not a requirement, please feel free to drop the your two statements in the chat. Again, once you have something written, you can you can either hold up your, your picture if, if you'd rather, or you can type it in the chat, or you can keep it for yourself. I make these all the time on sticky notes, always by my desk, and I put them up sometimes when I have to remember the tension that exists on a particular project or a, a particular initiative. Remember that both things can exist simultaneously. So feel free to continue to add those into the chat as you, as you finish them up, if you wanna share them. I'm gonna pass it over to Aliza now for an additional deep dive into this work. Great, now I, I'm actually gonna, we're gonna do a poll in just a second. Um, you're going to uh, see the poll come up on your screen through some Sarah Beth magic. And all the questions are true or false. So you could just take a minute and go through the poll and mark based on your understanding, true or false. And then we're going to see what everyone contributed to the poll and be able to look at that all together. Let me give just a minute or two for the poll to come in. And in the meanwhile, uh, if you could do two things at once, take a look in the chat because several of you have raised some really beautiful, um, you know, both ands contradictions that you're holding in your vent diagram. The importance of developing authentic relationships and the pressures that come from my to do list. Um, the need to have some understanding of the grantees, you know, kind of impact budget details, but not wanting them uh, to feel penalized or worried about their funding. So like, I think those are those are some really great examples here. Um, yeah, the, the true, yeah, the true false is not our best friend here. I, Lisa, thank you for flagging that. Um, we're going to do our best with it because we we wanted to put the po the poll in all one language so that it would be efficient uh, to fill it out online. And I see that we've got most of um, most of the responses are in. I'm going to wait one more minute, and then I'll we'll, we can share out the. Okay, we we have about 35 out of 42 people have responded, so I'm going to end the poll now. And everyone can should now can everyone see the poll in front of them? I have to share the results. Okay, great. So um, that this is interesting. We're about 60 40 on whether grant makers and grant seekers are pursuing the same impact. 60% of you thought that was true, but 40% of you thought that was not true. Does anyone who thinks it's not true want to share why they think it's not true? Why grant makers and grant seekers aren't pursuing the same impact? You just come off mic. I can share something. Um, I think I've spent most of my time on the grant seeker side. Um, and so I think that that probably skews me maybe a little bit away from the group who's primarily uh, grant makers because of the, the conference. Um, and so I think, um, I think often grant seekers are forced to frame their pitch as though they're seeking the same impact as the grant maker, but they're often kind of reformulating that and repitching, um, basically framing their impact according to the, the how, how to get funded. Um, and so this also kind of leads to another question, which was who's driving the agenda um, that you guys ask later. Great, great question. Um, so the second question is grant seekers do a good job of keeping grant makers informed and up to date. And a majority of you don't feel that's true. Um, so does someone, want to say speaking as a grant maker why you you feel like grant seekers aren't doing 
the best job they could in helping you get the information you need. I think this tied into a later question about sharing challenges. Okay. I think um, very often we see that grant seekers are hesitant to share those challenges because they worry it'll impact potential dollars. And it's really helpful to, to know that and understand that at the beginning, in the middle, and then at the end. And I just think that there's, um, I don't know if it's an issue of transparency or hesitancy to, to share that because of the, um, the worry about the impact of the dollars. I, I would say that it, it's very much what the relationship is between the, um, the foundation and its staff and, and, the, and the recipient agency. If there's a feeling of trust and that they won't be punished, then they can be open and honest. If, if they've had a failure and then they're, gonna, they're afraid they're going to lose their funding, then they're not going to be open and transparent because they're going to lose their funding. So it, it's, again, built on that relationship of, of trust. I, I, I feel that um, as, as a, a grant manager, um, despite the fact that I believe I'm, I'm, I'm building a trusting relationship between uh, the uh, foundation and myself, um, I still would need for the most time to seek and to dig for uh, some uh, some uh, details and some some information that might not, might be escaping my eyes, um, uh, because apparently no one wants to share their challenges so eagerly. Right. So there's sort of a built-in. You know, we're talking about a built-in like keeping up of appearances, not sharing the bad news. Uh, inherent to the relationship. And um, as we move into the exercise that we'll do in a little while on the jam boards, I want you all to think about what are some of the strategies you're employing now, and also some of the strategies you'd like to try to actually dismantle that dynamic or change that dynamic. Because it sounds like we all believe that is the dynamic, or many of us believe that is the dynamic. And the question then is how to sort of uh, re reconfigure that or rethink that. Um, most grant seek, so this, this runs parallel here. Most grant seeker conversations are transparent and honest. We have a slight sense that that's not true. And I think that probably possibly relates to the earlier question about being able to get information that you need or also feeling like the, the grantee is only showing their best side and not their, their challenges. Um, this was an interesting one. Because uh, I think it was it was pretty unanimous. Grant seekers feel pressure to emphasize their success, downplay their challenges and shortcomings. Um, and on six, grant seekers take enough time to get to know one another and build trust. So that's interesting. Uh, we really feel like we're not putting the time into the relationships to get the trusting relationship that we would like to have or the, the kind of level of trust we'd like to have. So it's something to think about as we go into the bigger conversation. And also, um, this is an interesting one on whether grant makers are the ones that have the biggest influence on the Jewish community agenda. And there's a sense here, 60% say yes, but a strong 40% say maybe it's not just the grant makers. Um, I want to kind of open up the floor and you can feel to free to come off mic. Was there anything in the poll that really surprised you of what we just saw of our of our perspectives? I really do think a, a, a revert scale would be better on this. It was very challenging because so much of this, um, it's not a binary yes or no, true or false. And I know that that was discussed in the chat, but it always amazes me how, because different relationships take time. And how, even though I, my brother always says, and we still laugh about it, and we're obviously well into adulthood, the cover up is worse than the crime. Mm -hmm. And I often feel that way. Uh, you know, like it's, I often find there are the grantees who are asking for forgiveness and the grantees asking for permission, and the grantees who are informing and asking for advice. And, you know, it's, you know, that, that challenge also, or like, are they asking for advice? Or are they asking for permission? Are they, what is all of that? And that, this doesn't take into account the complexity with which we try and hold those relationships. And, and I liked somebody else commented about the place that we hold for those of us who are staff at a family foundation, that challenge that we have, that um, sometimes we're both an analyst and an advocate, we're a matchmaker, 
between an opportunity and, a fu and the funding. There's so many different roles that we play depending on the situation. Um, and I think a lot of this gets to a lot of them, but they're, they're really complex. I wish they were more simple, but they, they take so much, they take a lot of time and they're all of deep uh, interest. Was there anything that, that you think you might do differently based on what you saw in the poll or anything you wanna explore further based on the poll? Great, then I'm gonna hand it over to Taylor and we are going to move into an exercise that will let us kind of crack this open another layer. Fantastic. Um, so really the big show here is the Granted Hub and that's why we're all here and what we're excited about. And I appreciate us having some dialogue building up to the reveal of the site. And um, grant makers will have access to materials with the goal of supporting your ability to build a meaningful and effective relationship with grant seekers. So building off of what we had in the poll, if there is a sense of how might we strengthen communication and relationship building, sustaining impact and power dynamics, there'll be materials available to you to dive into and explore your own skills and your own um, ability to um, continue to grow as a, as a grant maker. Um, the four that I just listed on, on um, the slide are the four themes and the four sections of the hub. Relationship building focuses on tools for establishing and maintaining trusting and respectful interpersonal relationships. The communication theme and section includes some resources to enhance your communication style, which may include how to avoid assumptions, how to share effective feedback, and how to articulate your preferences. The third is sustaining impact. So this section includes tools that have been identified by both grant makers and grant seekers about how to create long-term impact together. And the fourth is power dynamics. So a section and a theme all focused with materials and how to make sure that all voices are heard and that power is not abused within the relationship. So we're gonna take some time right now in this activity. I know we've talked about the Jamboard, the time is here. Um, you will have the opportunity to explore one of the four themes in a smaller group and to explore um, how the grant making community is both successful at and how you can, we continue to grow when engaging with grant seekers. So what's gonna happen is Sarah Beth is gonna drop the link to the Jamboard in the chat. What's gonna happen is that we're gonna split up into those four groups and there will be a JFN staff member or an Upstart staff member in each of the, the four groups to explain a little bit more how we'll use the Jamboard to um, explore the prompts that are presented. And as Aliza mentioned, we are going to feature a version of these Jamboards on the Hub itself. You are contributing to the material that others will have access to. Um, it will be edited and will be attributed generally to JFN members, not um, attributing anyone specifically. Um, so before entering the breakout, just make sure that you click the link that was just sent to you for the Jamboard. Um, and um, Sarah Beth, I think that we have 10 minutes on the clock for the breakout. Thank you so much, Sarah Beth. So she's gonna send us all on our, on our way and then pull us back when the time comes. So see you in a moment in our groups. Um, I know that we probably could spend even more time deep in these discussions and wanting to go on each of the slides. And what I invite all of you to do is if you get a chance to um, stay in the, the Jamboard, read what um, your colleagues said on the other slides as well. And if you see anything that you wanna contribute and add on to without deleting or removing another person's work, please feel free. And like Aliza um, mentioned at the top of the hour, we're going to share this as a part of the Granted Hub um, as another resource for our colleagues. Um, Aliza is now going to actually show us a little bit of the Hub, and um, I'm going to pass it over to her to do so. Sorry about that. Um, this is me not able always to do two things at once. Here we go. Um, I'm bringing you into the Granted site. You will get this link. This is jgranted.org. You can go and spend time here. I'm just giving this here as a little bit of a preview. So you see our, this is the opening page of the site which explains who this is for and what, and what its purpose is. Then you are able to go into each of the four topics, sustaining impact, relationship building, communication and power dynamics. So if you went into sustaining impact, you would see an overview of the topic of sustaining impact you would see a wonderful conversation between a grant maker and a grant seeker 
all about how they work on sustaining impact together. This one happens between, to be between David Siegelman, the founder of Moisha House, and uh, Jim Heeger, who has been an active philanthropist board member and actually is currently serving as their CFO. He's been a very hands-on involved member of their organization. Uh, so you can read conversations like that there. There are also case studies and examples pulled from the Jewish community, as well as when you wanna go and see all the resources on that topic, there is a searchable function where you can say, I wanna see resources on sustaining impact, but I specifically wanna see them around COVID-19 and flexibility. And then you can search for them that way and it will pull up the relevant resources that meet those criteria. You'll also see that the resources are labeled. So some of them are articles, but there are also videos and other, uh, you know, other podcasts and other ways of taking in information. Um, so we invite you to come play on the site, visit the site, learn about the resources that are available here, pull things out. This can be both for your own learning, but also to bring to a team meeting, to use a tool and sit down with a grantee together with the tool and talk through it together. These are all meant to be conversation starters. Um, and uh, Taylor, if you bring the slides back up, we're gonna move just into the um, end of the session. Um, I just want to, first of all, invite you to participate in this initiative called Granted. So this isn't meant to just be a, a you know, okay, we rolled out the website, good, go, go visit the website. There's a function on the website where you can give us feedback. You can tell us what you'd like to see more of. You can rate articles that you use and tools that you use. You can leave a review. I heartily encourage you to leave a review because I think that's the way that we as a field can build each other up and direct each other towards the resources that are most useful and relevant. So um, if you spend time there, please think of rating things and reviewing them. Um, we are going to be rolling out a series of facilitated conversations between grant makers and grant seekers. And we invite you to both come to these conversations as a participant, or even think about convening one within your field or in your geographic area. The very first conversation is gonna happen on the West Coast at the end of April. If you are a JFN member and you're interested in a facilitated conversation with grantees and you're on the West Coast, be in touch with Sivia and Deborah. We are working on that program with them and that will be rolled out. And then we're talking about potentially a program in Israel over the summer and other um, convened conversations. So again, if the demand comes from the field that will also drive which conversations happen. Um, and then there's gonna be a series of programs and webinars in conjunction with Granted. If you would like to hear more from Jack Wertheimer and hear about the report, which is also featured on the landing page of the website, that will be on April 19th. It's a JFN webinar program and you would sign up for it the way you would sign up for any other JFN program. In May, we're gonna be doing a session around how COVID-19 has informed some practices in grant maker, grant seeker relationships and how we build off of some of those good, I would say silver linings that came out of COVID-19 in terms of flexibility and conversations between grant makers and grant seekers. That'll be in May. In June, we're gonna introduce a new self-assessment tool for grant makers and grant seekers that we're building in conjunction with Exponent Philanthropy. Um, and that's the tip of the iceberg. There will be programs throughout the year. So we are one minute from close, uh, but if there are any, any last things people wanna say, please come off mic and share. Um, we were so delighted to have you here and we really thank you for your interest in Granted and hope you will become frequent users. Um, Aliza, can I mention just one thing? There's a newsletter that will be sent out and if you can go on, if, you, if you're interested, it'll be sending out, pushing out interesting new content around these four topics. So you can sign up for the newsletter on the website. And also if you find materials or an article that you read that you think would be important to this conversation, please send it our way where it's a, you know, it, where there's, um, it's, it's a curated and created resource. So anything that you, you, know, you, wanna, you wanna share and be sure that your colleagues see, we, we'd love to include it. I just, I have a, a quick question about, I was thinking a lot of this in relation to like CEP reports, the Center for Effective Philanthropy, which a lot of us use every few years to kind of do some self-evaluation, see what our 
grantees think of us. And I wonder about opportunities for integration within the Jewish philanthropic world, that there be some questions that come up through this that are suggested to CEP so that there's a way to kind of look at it across the field. That's a great question. One of the real, I would say, ancillary benefits of this project is we started to develop relationships with many other philanthropy serving organizations, including CEP. And we've embarked in partnerships with a number of them. Exponent just is one that Elisa just mentioned. We are in conversation with CEP around their grantee perception report. Actually, we're gonna have discounts available to our members to participate, but as we can help, I mean, Ari's actually been reading, reading this yeah, effort. I thought um, but I think a, we can help shape the conversation. But we are actually um, embarking on a series of these of um, of these partnerships. I mean, Center for Effective Philanthropy. I, there are about seven or eight. I don't want to mention any just yet. But really, we want to do this for our membership. We want to deepen what it means to be a JFN member, including partnerships with other PSOs, other philanthropy servicing organizations. So, Center for Effective Philanthropy and others are all included in that. It's something that we will be hopefully ro rolling out the next couple of months. Thank you very very much for coming to hear about Granted. Bye-bye.